Our first guest tonight says Comey potentially committed a serious crime just by leaking government documents and did so intentionally to manipulate, he says, an ongoing investigation into so-called Russian meddling and collusion in the 2016 elections. Joining us tonight is Congressman Andy Biggs, a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Good to have you with us. I guess the first thing I should yeah. do is ask you, what do you uh, make of all of the, uh, the references uh, last night in that uh, interview uh, to a FBI director by himself, to an FBI director who was so personally nauseous, uh, overcome by the developments, he seems like a, the most delicate daffodil in the law enforcement and counterintelligence business I've ever seen. Yeah, well, he's not only delicate, he's uh, politically motivated, he's sanctimonious, he's, in my opinion, he's, he, he, he seems to be corrupt, he's leaking things, I think he's violated the law. I think if anybody has brought more disrepute on the leadership of the FBI than James Comey, I don't know who it would be, quite frankly. And it's, it's an outrageous thing. And, uh, and here we sit, even today, we're waiting for memos to come out that, that be delivered to uh, uh, the Judiciary and Intelligence Committee. They aren't happening, which is, we should hold these folks in contempt because they're obviously holding the legislative branch of government in contempt. These are the things that just drive people crazy. This is what people say, hey, that's the swamp, because it is the swamp. Well, it's a swamp, but it's also uh, a Justice Department and FBI telling you all to go to hell. And yeah. uh, it's about time everybody understood what the message is, and uh, you all decide, and I get the impression that uh, Chair Devin Nunes has decided what he's going to do about it. What do you think? Well, I think we need to hold the, the FBI and DOJ in contempt. I mean, look, this, this goes back for many years, but they're, they're blowing deadlines purposefully. That, that is the kind of the, the definition of contempt. We've given you an order, you've got a deadline, and when you blow it, it you're, you're basically saying, we're going to hold you in contempt, uh, legislative branch, we don't care what you say, and we're not going to let the people with top secret uh, clearance have access to documents that uh, Mr. Comey leaked. This is a problem, and, and we have to be aggressive. We can't back down. We have to do the people's duty and get in there and punch, and that's, that's what we have to do. The House is on deadlines, and I have to say, the only, the only committee that has done a damn thing belongs to uh, Devin Nunes. Uh, yeah. The rest of the committees have done nothing. Uh, they talk, they have, uh, you know, and, and I mean, listening to Trey Gowdy, frankly, as the chair of the Oversight Committee, that's a joke. He spent four terms in Congress and has never done anything yet. Uh, yeah. Nunes is showing everybody how to move forward and to actually accomplish something. Do you think the conference is getting that and now understands that they've got to move ahead, that the old way of doing business, I don't care, I don't think I, there's a single American citizen who cares about their traditions of Congress, the, the Senate, uh, all of that nonsense. They want to see problems fixed. They want to see progress made every day. Yeah, they, they look to us and, and, and they elected Donald Trump to be a change agent. They elected this body and the Senate to be change agents. And in my opinion, we have not changed enough. We have not uh, taken the steps we need to. I have tremendous respect for Devin because Devin is actually taking the bull by the horns. He's trying to really wrestle has. that bull down and, and get it going. He's got kicked in the teeth for doing it, but he's doing the right thing. And that's what all of the committees need to do. And that's what all, of, quite frankly, all of the uh, Republican conference in both the House and the Senate need to do. We so, are elected to be change agents. Let's make the change. So Paul Ryan makes a change, and he decides he's going to retire whenever the hell he wants. And meanwhile, we're watching, we're just watching the beginning of what looks like a very turbulent moment in Republican history as the vying to uh, replace Ryan uh, has begun in earnest. Yeah, I mean, uh, things are out there, and, and I don't even think you've seen everybody get into the race that I think is going to ultimately get in the race. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm just looking for a few things. I want honesty. I want somebody to be just honest and look me in the eye. I know that they're telling me the truth. I want them to get back to regular order. Why, why can't we just debate bills, debate amendments, vote them up and down on the floor? That's wait what minute, we're supposed to be Aren't doing. Aren't you in regular order? I was, I was, I was told <laughs> and I was promised by your leadership that you'd be in regular order. That we're yeah. going to see a new day in which there were hearings and congressmen and congresswomen listened to the citizens of this country. Uh, and there were amendments and they moved forward and there will be a budget, not a $1.3 trillion spending omnibus bill. Uh, you're telling me you think there's a chance they might actually deliver on that promise? 
I'm prayerful, uh, Lou. I'm prayerful. That's a wonderful <laughs> word. And look, appropriate. I, yeah. Look, I'm just telling you, when you give me a 2,300-page bill and you say you have to have your amendments in within an hour and a half. Go. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, you got to be kidding me. Because this is no way to run so why does this everybody say, big government. I mean, your conference keeps talking about Ryan being a terrific speaker. Are you kidding me? He's not a conservative. He's not a speaker. He's not an administrator. He's not a change agent. He's a sellout. Like, unfortunately, much of the leadership of the uh, House, uh, uh, I mean, he's a sellout to K Street. Yeah, look, look, when, when people ask me, I say, I want somebody, not, we've mentioned regular order. I said, look, I also want somebody who understands that the number one problem in this country, the existential problem we have, is our national deficit. The structural deficit that's causing our national debt to explode. Well, hang on, Congressman. As you well know, it's not going to improve for a while. Right. Uh, can, can we just get somebody who's really committed yeah. to those three principles? That's what I want. Okay. Who do you want as speaker? Uh, well, uh, I think the people I want haven't uh, formally declared yet. Oh, <laughs> so all right. The that. suspense is building. Yeah. Yeah. I think Con there's some suspense there. Congressman Andy Biggs, good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Lou.